Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number 40 and we start today's episode off with the Confederations Cup with Brazil. That's right, season 2 ended in the last episode. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. It was the final day of the Bundesliga season as we went in search of the title and our first piece of silverware with Hamburg. The season ended in the last episode and of course now we had the Confederations Cup to play with our nation Brazil. So we took over Brazil in season 2 and I was saying I wasn't entirely sure I was going to play this competition or not. Wasn't really sure because some people don't really care about the international side of career mode at all. But for some people, it's a really important aspect of it. They really enjoy managing a nation and seeing what they can do. I've always liked to take a country on as a side project alongside managing a club as well. So because of that, what I've normally done in my previous career modes, unless it's a club and country save, is when I'm managing a nation, don't play qualifiers or friendlies. But if we get to a national tournament, be it the Confederations Cup, or the South America's Cup or, or uh, the, uh, the Euros for example or the World Cup obviously then we play that competition so because of that we get into the Federation Cup with Brazil it's the first national tournament we've been eligible to play and because of that I thought we may as well play it and see how we do uh, although I did say as well in the last episode if you missed it too that I wasn't going to be showing any Hamburg stuff during this Confederations Cup adventure so if you're watching this episode and you think well to be honest it could be quite fun but I'd rather just wait for Hamburg stuff don't worry you won't miss anything to do with the club in these episodes you'll just see the Confederations Cup stuff with Brazil and you saw our group at the start as well we joined in group B we've got New Zealand Argentina and also Ivory Coast we took on New Zealand for the first of the three games in our group stage you saw our squad as well I would open the scoring this one in the 27th minute we got to a good start as you can see here putting the pressure on New Zealand early we'd be clear favorites for this game so because of that I decided to rest quite a few players as we had Argentina in three days time and Hulk got on the end of this Thiago Silva cross and headed it past the goalkeeper and in to the back of the net so Brazil won New Zealand and nil and of course managing Brazil you saw the squad I picked as well there's quite a few young faces in this team I prioritized youth over experience for the most part there's still quite a few players that are in their 30s Hulk and Thiago Silva are one each if that makes sense they're both in their 30s and those are the two that combined for our first and only goal of the games it finished Brazil one New Zealand nil so we got to a winning start here in the Confederations Cup this, of course, will be my first game played with Brazil as well. I uh, hadn't played any of the friendlies or the qualifiers in the World Cup with them either. So this is the first game I played with them, and it was a pretty routine victory, to be honest. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for an easier start. And no disrespect to anyone from New Zealand out there, but they're one of the worst nations in the game. In fact, I think there might be... No, I'd imagine India are probably considered worse, but they're one of the worst nations in the game regardless in terms of star rating. So we're Brazil, a five-star nation, and despite resting a few players, I think it was pretty obvious we were going to win that game pretty comfortably and we did and to be honest the fact we only scored one goal was a little bit disappointing but regardless we got the win uh, we won the game by a goal to nil and then we took an Argentina an old foe of Brazil for our second game here and as you can see as well by the stadium we were playing at River Plate Stadium and I realized that with the way the World Cup and the Confederations Cup and the international tournaments are run in uh, in in career mode it's really trivial and I know some of you guys probably don't care about this and I'd imagine barely anyone cares about this but me but it's really annoying how for the Confederations Cup or any national tournament it's played at one location it's played at one location either in one country or a combination of countries in one region but in career mode the, uh, the home team for the fixtures always play at their home stadium their national team stadium so for Argentina taking them on here at River Plate Stadium it kind of made no sense really because obviously we're not in Argentina for the Confederations Cup but we were playing it there because they were the home team and again I know it's something which no one really cares about but it's just one of those trivial things that just takes away the realistic aspect for me but regardless we've taken Argentina it was nil nil at the break we'd played way better in the first half as you can see though we'd had seven shots and five on target and yes they'd had a little bit more possession we'd hit the post as well but really the goalkeeper was just on fire for the Argentine nation we just could not the Argentine nation it was on fire for Argentina and we just could not find the goal in the first half but in the second half directly from kickoff we went down the right hand side cut inside went central and as we gave the ball to Douglas Costa he let fly and found the back of the net as well so finally just after kickoff the deadlock is broken and we take the lead here against Argentina Douglas Costa with a goal wearing the number seven jersey and I'm really pleased to take the lead in this one because right from kickoff we attacked Argentina we were ferocious when going forward we looked for sure that we'd score at some stage but I thought the longer it went on this may just be one of those FIFA games where the goalkeeper for the opposition is on fire you won't break him down no matter how hard you try but fortunately we would find a goal and it did indeed come through Douglas Costa so Argentina 
Argentina nil, Brazil won. We take the lead right after the restart here in the second half. But in the second half as well, in the 68th minute, Cesar Valente, who was really just a spectator in the game against New Zealand, pulled off an unbelievable save to deny Di Maria, who cut in from the left-hand side. What a stop by Cesar. He kept it at 1-0, and then we went up the other end, and again, really made another great save to keep Argentina still only trailing by a goal. Once again, turning a shot onto the post. So for the second time, we hit the woodwork in this game. It was still 1-0. But as the game was coming to its close, I was unbelievably frustrated when this happened. Argentina played a long ball forward, and we seemed to have it covered when Fabinho made a great recovery challenge. But for some strange reason, he got in a complete mix-up with Marquinhos, I think it might have been, in the centre. And as you can see, it came straight to Tevez, who had absolutely no problem finessing that ball past Cesar Valente, and with a minute on the clock in normal time, equalising for Argentina and making sure the game finished Argentina 1, Brazil 1. So we failed to win our second game in the group stage, but the truth of the matter is, I was absolutely livid after this one. 11 shots, 7 on target, we'd hit the woodwork twice, and then for Argentina to go up the other end in, well, just a minute to go of normal time, and for a complete defensive calamity to happen between one of my players with Hamburg and also Marquinhos or Miranda, it certainly wasn't Thiago Silva. Well, let's just say that I was absolutely furious with myself because I know it's my fault and everything. When the long ball came forward, I thought, yeah, it's going to press the circle button, get it clear. And I was hammering down the circle button. You may have realized it too, because if you watch that back, you'll see on the highlight, Fabinho lunges. And that's, of course, with the circle button for the stand tackle, if you will, because the ball just ricocheted off his foot. And eventually, as you can see, again, it was either Miranda or Marquinhos got in his way and Tevez ran on to score. So I'll take the blame for it, but I was still pretty annoyed because I think I should have got it clear. And uh, again, didn't really get much help for that one. But regardless, it was 1-1. That was the final score. Which meant coming into the final game of the group stage here against Ivory Coast. We had four points from the first two group stage games and they had three, which meant they had to win in this game. Otherwise, they will be going out and we will be going through to the Confederations Cup semi-finals. So a draw would not be enough for them. They had to beat us. And after the first two games, well, we brushed aside New Zealand pretty comfortably. We should have brushed aside Argentina pretty comfortably. But again, I threw it away with one minute to go of normal time. So I thought, coming into this game here, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to go ahead and pick a weakened side for this game, rest pretty much all of my players, and I think I did as well, apart from Danilo, who's going to be my normal first choice right back for Brazil. I rested all my players for this one. Decided to be bold. It's because there's barely any rest time between games in the Confederations Cup. The next game in the semi-final comes just a couple days after this one. I thought, I'll play a weekend side. I'm feeling comfortable with this Brazil squad, and just 11 minutes in, we went 1-0 up through the Liverpool man, Roberto Firmino. So the former Hoffenheim man making it 1-0. We take the lead in this game, and then directly from kickoff, Ivory Coast get the ball away. Pato gets onto it, and for Finesses the ball into the back of the net and makes it 2 0. So, in a blink of an eye, Ivory Coast went from being level at 0 0 and knowing that in this game it will be hard, but you never know, they could sneak the win and go through to the semi finals to being two goals down, needing to score three goals, and thinking to themselves, yeah, we may as well pack our bags and get on the plane at half time. It's Brazil 2, Ivory Coast 0. The weekend side already taking a two goal advantage in this one, and I was feeling pretty, pretty pleased knowing that I was resting all my usual starters apart from Danny knowing that going into the semi-final, which we will do now, we will be fully fit and fully rested. So a good decision in the end to play the weekend side. We were two goals up in the first 15 minutes. Yaya Toy went pretty close to getting Ivory Coast back in the game in the second half there. But as you can see, it was a good save by Julio Cesar, standing in for Cesar Valente. And then the 68th minute here, Luis Gustavo got onto the ball, took aim from range and found the back of the net as well for the goal of the tournament so far as he made it Brazil free, Ivory Coast nil. So the Wolfsburg man picked it up from range, decided to let fly and also found the bottom corner as well. I will be honest, I think the goalkeeper should have saved it. It was a sweet strike and everything. It was a very accurate shot as well going into the bottom corner, but if you look on the replays, he's pretty slow to get down, very slow to shuffle his feet. He may have been deceived by the defender standing in front of him. That's the only thing I can think of as to why he wasn't able to react on time. But again, the shot didn't really have too much power and that's why I thought, especially at the time, he should have saved it. Maybe I'm being too critical as you guys know. Sometimes I can be very critical uh, critical goalkeepers in this game but either way he didn't save it not that it mattered and we won the game by three goals to nil so final score three nil we dominate possession in this game as well and Ivory Coast did have a few good chances too none better than that Yaya Torre effort which was well saved by Julio Cesar but for the most part once we got it two goals in front early on in the first 15 minutes my game plan just decided to switch from what it normally is which is keep attacking keep attacking keep attacking try and get as many goals as possible to well let's just pass the ball around and conserve energy because as I said before you don't get much rest time in national tournaments, only a couple of days between the games. And I thought of our semi-final going to be played in a couple of 
games, it's going to be a formality now. I'll be going through. We need to make sure that the players are going to be fit, even the bench players, if we want to bring them on. So I decided to conserve as much energy as possible and make sure the side were going to be as fit as they could be. But 3 0 was the final score. We get through to the semi finals. We would take on Spain for this semi final here, whereas Germany took on Argentina in the other semi final. They played that game one day before us and they thrashed Argentina by five goals to nil. Now, of course, we all know that uh, Germany are one of the strongest nations in the world, of course, winning the last World Cup in 2014. So it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, but I guess the scoreline was a little bit of a shock to me, thinking, oh my goodness, if we get through to the final and we've got to take on that Germany side, they beat Argentina by five goals to nil. We drew against them 1-1. And of course, we all know what happened in the game in the World Cup between those two nations. I'm not going to be especially looking forward to that, but I still want to have a go. So regardless, coming to this game in the semi-final, here against Spain, knowing that whatever team would go through would be taking on Germany. I was looking forward to the game, and Jonas would open the scoring just 16 minutes in as well. We went down the right-hand side, cut back with Hulk, crossed it into the centre, and our number nine, who I've been trusted with the, uh, he's been trusted with the role as the main striker for this competition, he hadn't scored a single goal in the group stage. I decided to start in for this semi-final, and what a way to get the first goal of the competition for him. On the volley, rifling it past the goalkeeper, and again, might be being a little bit too critical here, but it was pretty much straight at him. I thought we might have been able to save that one. But either way, a sweet strike on the volley and it was Brazil 1, Spain 0. Valente then made a really good save there to keep it at 1-1 back in goal after Julio Cesar's clean sheet in the last game. It was still 1-0 to Brazil. And in the second half, four minutes after the restart here, we double our advantage. And Sergio Asenjo may have been blamed for the first goal. I think he should have saved it. But there was no saving this one as Holt gets his second goal of the competition and makes it Brazil 2, Spain 0. The Zenit and Petersburg man cuts in from the right-hand side and takes aim and what a strike this was. He fakes shot to get through the gap of two Spain players. You can see them there and takes aim with the weaker right foot and just rifles the ball into the top corner from 20 yards. And that goal from Hulk was an absolute screamer. Without doubt, the best goal of the tournament. So Luis Gustavo's goal only lasted for one game. It was the best goal of the tournament. What a goal by Hulk. He's our top scorer with two goals in the competition. And what a beautiful strike that was. So Hulk getting the second goal of the game five minutes after the restart start. Brazil 2, Spain 0 and I felt for sure now we would be advancing to the final to take on Germany. Cesc Fabregas had the final chance of the game here 9 minutes after the restart but couldn't get his side back in the game as the shot went wayward and behind for a goal kick and it was how the game would finish. Final score, Brazil 2, Spain 0 and we advanced to the Confederations Cup final so delighted with that. We've only played 4 games with this country, all 4 coming in the Confederations Cup. We've won 3 we've drawn 1. We're now taking on the Germany side who as we all know by now are going to be probably favourites to win this competition. But I'm looking forward to the final. It should be good. And it will be coming in the next episode later on tonight. So thanks very much for watching the episode, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Now, don't forget, you're not missing anything with Hamburg. I'm keeping the footage of Season 3 held back until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. UK time when the first episode of Season 3 will go live. So don't worry too much. If you want to watch the next episode, it is the Confederations Cup final with Brazil against Germany. It will come out later tonight after the Arsenal-Norwich game at around 7.30 p.m. UK time. But thanks for watching the episode regardless. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you for the Confederations Cup final with Brazil taking on Germany later on tonight.